tested in the communities. If you are testing, you know, if you are in a country where you have uh, very little cases in it, mm. and you, you have isolated all the cases and you are testing, you are supposed to be getting your numbers going down. If the numbers are going up, they are not going up because you are testing. They are mm. going up because people actually have the disease. But, but you can also are, write away the fact that uh, testing is accounting for testing some of the numbers we're seeing. You, you contact only, tracing, enhanced contact tracing. Absolutely. Tracing. All those things help. Mm. But you cannot simply say that your numbers are going up because of testing. Okay. You should also look at what is going on in the community. People mm. are getting infected. Any single person that you get who's got a virus has probably infected somebody. Mm. And you've got to be able to find all those people. If they are in house A, you have to be able to isolate them. Mm. But when you have opened the, taken off the lockdown and people could, could move from house A to house B, mm. house B people could be infected. They all have different relations and friends and all that. Mm. They could go and infect them. So I really don't... Uh, are you in effect calling for the lockdown to be re reinforced? Well, the problem with that, the lockdown should have been in place. The reason why the government could not actually hold on to the lockdown mm -hmm. is simply because the lockdown should actually go with some you know, rescue mm. provision, some, the, what, what the president set up as a, um, what is it called, alleviation, coronavirus mm. alleviation Super, program. Right. Mm. You should have that p program to go alongside because people are still relatively poor. Mm. People depend on going out on a daily basis to be able to get, you know, money to feed themselves. Mm. So if you are going to do a lockdown, then you should be able to feed them and feed them effectively. Can we afford it? That's the point. Well, they, and we they, afford it. We allocated in, in, in the alleviation, mm. we put 1.2 billion right. down. Mm. About 300 million of that mm. was supposed to go into providing food, packages, and hot meals. Within three days, uh, three weeks, we have basically exhausted 300 million. Because we are spending 2 million a day to feed people. Because 400,000 people. Absolutely, we were not doing it effectively. That, that clearly tells you. How do you, you mean the mean, numbers are there? You, you saw the way the food was be, be, being distributed. I was watching a clip where people were going and coming to collect, you know, more food because the food were actually being thrown out of cars or, or, or trucks. We have the military, mm. we have the police on the street. And these, you know, security agencies could have put this in some kind of a order, mm. but it didn't happen. So, it, you know, I, I, I have my, 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 my doubt mm. as to whether 300 million was actually spent in three weeks and you, where you're in parliament, actually, you should be asking that I'm, question in parliament. Well, I'm not the one cooking. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, we, we approve the you money. approve the money. Um, the usage of the money goes to the government to give to people who are going but to But you can food. always ask for it if you well, want. Well, of course, we will. We will, because if the lockdown had gone on any further, so obviously that tells you, you mm. said we ran out of money. Right. Obviously that tells you that. I'm not saying we ran out of money, I'm saying that. Government says we're spending two million cities on a okay, daily basis. Okay, so obviously, people. obviously that would have exhausted the money, mm. which means that the lockdown was not actually based on science. It was not based on data. It was actually based on our inability mm. to continue the alleviation program alongside the lockdown. And the government knows that it will have social problems and other consequences. So they had no option but to take the lockdown, you know, mm -hmm. or release the lockdown. The lockdown could have gone on for maybe a couple of weeks. I do get the argument mm -hmm. that people need to eat. Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. But it is the responsibility of the government, if he's going to keep all of us well, mm -hmm. to be able to feed people until we are at a comfortable place. How, how, how long should the lockdown have, have gone on? Well, I, I, I think that... It was that, on for three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. How long should I it mean, have gone people on? People have been locked down for, for months Do elsewhere. Do we have money? Do we because, have money? Well... It's allocation of money. Mm. When you have taken almost, a, uh, not almost, you have taken one billion from IMF in a rapid credit facility, mm. which is basically an emergency relief fund. You have taken money from the World Bank. Mm. You have basically, you know, reduced the cap on, on, on stabilization fund to allow you to take about 200 billion, that is capping it 100, 100 uh, million. Mm. You have the resources to be able to deal with this problem. You are asking government to complete hospitals. You're asking government to uh, provide PPEs. You're asking government to do well, everything. We've got how to, do, how do we've they got do to so prioritize. much with so little? The, pre, the, the hospitals are not going to be completed tomorrow. But how do they do so much First, with so little? Well, it, it's, it's about managing the economy. It's about setting your priorities right. We, we, we had an, a, a budget in November, mm. yeah, which basically put together the fiscal projections and monetary forecast for 2020. Right. The moment you get the coronavirus in, 
that budget goes out of the window. Absolutely. So you've got to prioritize because that budget has money against them. But your oil so prices are to, dropping. Well, that your is gains that the city made. That is also the problem. That, are that dropping. is why your you, three million euro bond is, is really not that making is why, now. That is why IMF has given you one billion. They didn't give you. You know, when we went to the IMF, mm. we got under one billion over a period of three years. Mm. So the money was given to us in tranches. This comes as a whole mm. because they know the severity of the problem. So you cannot have the money and now say that, you know, the problem mm -hmm. is that the economy was actually weak pre-COVID-19. Forget it about was. all the things. The economy was weak. The economy was not as robust mm. as they were telling us. The economy was not resilient. Mm. It was a fragile economy. But you kept quiet. The numbers you were kept quiet about no, we it. never. If you, if you, if you, maybe let me remind you. Mm. I'm one of the people who were questioning Dr. Baumier's figures. I sent the 230 questions. Mm. If you remember, absolutely. Yeah, that Did has, you get answers from? No, that? it's not been answered yet. Why not? Well, he's probably been saved by the coronavirus. But I, I will have to remind him that the coronavirus is not going to be there forever, and we will revisit. Those questions. But if government, it, for example, had a GDP target of 7.6 and achieved 6.7 out of that, that's that's good. EIU says government is doing the, well. The figures, and Moody says we're doing figures well. Figures were being on, on, Your figures are as good as what you portray to the world. People don't have the mechanisms to actually. They will try all sorts of things to get to get the figures from you, mm. the rating agencies and all that. But basically, most of the data they get, they rely on the government. Therefore, if the government is not telling the truth about their deficit, about their debt, about other things that, is going, that, that are going on in the economy, then you, they, you can get a favorable picture. Mm. But in the end, something will expose you. What has exposed them now is the COVID-19. You so you're 19. saying, we'll come back to what I was saying. So yeah. Are you suggesting to me now that these rating agencies don't look beyond what they see, well, beyond what is presented to them? What I'm saying is that, I, I mean, I've been there. They look beyond what they see. Mm. But then they can see as far as you are actually providing truthful numbers. Okay. It has to be done together. It's not just about them coming to your country and find. Sometimes they find things out quicker than we do. Mm. But if government deliberately wants to hide things, I mean, if you look at the IMF report, it was pointed out mm. that certain arrears figures, certain debt figures were, were, were put below the line. And below the line means that they are not accounted for in the deficit. Mm. They are not account for, accounted for in the debt. Mm. And the IMF were actually questioned that and said that if you put these numbers in, your deficit will not be the 4.8 or 4.9 that you have recorded to, to, to stay within the fiscal rule, but it will actually go beyond that. So we have been talking about numbers being cooked for some time now, mm. that the numbers that we are seeing are not true. And they are telling us, oh, that's the real How numbers. How dangerous is that? IMF, very dangerous, and that is what the COVID has expo exposed us. Okay. Because it is dangerous in a sense that Economy that was doing so well, mm -hmm. hit by COVID within three weeks, we are running to the IMF for... for, for every, every country is running to every somebody. Every country is running, help. but some countries are in a better position than others. So what you do and when you do it tells how strong you are. Mm -hmm. But if in three weeks you are running, you are all over the place looking for money. If in three weeks you don't have money to sustain your, your so-called... Co coronavirus uh, 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 alleviation program. Mm. And because of that, you have to release the lockdown to put everybody's health at risk. Then you, you did not actually have the economy that you... How, you, you how long should, should government have sustained itself before running to IMF or calling out for help? Well, at least you will expect. I, I, I've been hearing somewhere else that we have reserves that could have lasted us for three months or something. Mm. I mean, maybe three months is even too much. But you will expect that at least you go for a month or two. You should be able to do a lockdown for maybe a, at least six weeks or something. You that, know, that will be drinking too deep into the well. Well, but what is important? Can you recover? People, what is important? Money. As, as the president himself said, we, can, we know how to fix the economy. Mm. We, don't, we, don't, we wouldn't know how to resurrect people. Mm. So your first thing that you want to do is to be able to keep people alive. Okay. Not about the economy. Mm. Okay, the economy comes secondary. The pandemic creates two problems. It creates a medical crisis and economic crisis. Okay. You have to address the economic crisis and the medical crisis for people to be well. And then the economy will be, will be looked after. It takes after. money to fix the medical crisis. It takes crisis. money. So look, it's a public health issue. If you, have to, a bigger bill. if you have to borrow, you borrow. If you have to print money, you print money. But that's that's, that's what people are borrowing. Do. Exactly. 
But again, when you borrow, it doesn't end there. What are you borrowing for? What exactly are you using the money for? Okay. I mean, the 1.2 billion that we, we we have allocated ourselves, where 200, 280, which is about 3 million, 300 million, mm. is going into this food program. What food was cooked? Who cooked it? At what cost? Per day that they are telling us one million or whatever they. That are they, are you suggesting to me that about? when Mr. Kenoferiata came to Parliament to request for? This money on behalf of the government. Mm. These details were not put out there in well, the document. Uh, the details are as to how much you know a, a ball of kinky they are going to give to an, a, a citizen of this country. It will not be what will be submitted to parliament. Okay. They will come and say, ask for a bulk money that we're going to do a lockdown. Mm. Actually, nobody knew how long the lockdown was going to be. When the president came, he said two weeks, and then after the two weeks it was extended by by another week. Mm. Okay, so nobody knew. So you have to make a provision that will last mm -hmm. until you, are, you have arrested the, the medical or the health situation and make sure that when you release the lockdown, your people are actually going to be safe. People are going to stay alive. Mm -hmm. You don't have to open it because we don't have money. I mean, what yeah, is money you when you are dying? So, you put it so simply. Uh, it, but, it, you, but you have had a problem, for example, with government seeking to say, I want to dip my hand into the stabilization fund. Government is also giving well, tax you, exemptions you, you, to, to health yes, workers. Yes, and it was allowed. Two hundred billion. It was the heritage fund that were mm. stabilization fund was mm. allowed. As mm. I said, they capped it at a hundred million instead mm. of three hundred mm. million. So anything over and above hundred million is taken into the consolidated. Right. So so that is cash for them. Mm. Again, we had an IMF emergency, a uh, World Bank emergency support. Mm. That's money that came in. We have IMF also emergency relief, mm. which is the um, the rapid um, credit facility. Uh, one billion U.S. dollars. Okay. You have government who has put together a program for 1.2 billion. Mm. That's a lot of money that you can actually save lives with more than three weeks. But if, if the IMF, you, again, let's backtrack a bit before mm. we go on a break. If the IMF had issues with us, with some of the figures that we have put out, then the IMF should have rejected us calling for help. Well, from them. This, this, is, this, is, this is not an ordinary crisis. The crisis we are facing today hasn't happened for over for, for almost 100 years. Mm. The last time we had something similar to this was uh, 1918, well, we were flu, told, right. with the Spanish um, flu. The, the, the flu. Mm. This is basically spread across the world. Look, the impact here is probably not pandemic even as you know it yet, but we'll probably get there. But around the world, we have this problem. And as I said, Long, and the doctor said when he, long over, long after the medical problem is gone. And this thing is going to go away if we find a vaccine mm. or we find a cure. Or we, you and I are able to, you know, have our mask and all that, you know, for a very long time. Mm. Long over, the medical situation is, is, is gone. The economic situation will be there. It says four cycles. Four, four cycles. fiscal cycles. I, I'm, Number four I, years. I'm looking at five years. You're looking at five years. Five years. So the four says all three all years. Well, Theo says four I mean, years. You say five the, years. Yes, five Why years. Why do you say five years? I'm saying five years because what is happening at the moment is not just to do with Ghana. Mm. It's global. Look, you may even not have coronavirus case here in Ghana. You are going to suffer the economic impact of the, of the pandemic because you don't live in isolation. Mm. You trade with the other nations. Global trade is slow. You have closed your borders. Mm. So you are not getting some revenue in terms of imports, you know, duties. As you rightly said, mm. petroleum receipts have gone down. Right. We are expecting to lose about, about a billion mm. dollars from, from, from that side. Expenditure is going to go up because coronavirus-related expenditure, PPEs and other things you've, you've talked about. So deficit is definitely going to widen. So these are the things that are going to happen. Okay. And, and this will take a while to be able to fix it. Well, we'll and the government has when we, not when we come back, we will look at how to move forward and, and what the government is not doing right. We've said a lot about sure. that. We'll, we'll look at what we need to do going forward. But this is Hot Issues. My guest is Honorable Kweku Records Hagen. He is the Member of Parliament for Cape Coast South in the Central Region. He's also a former Deputy Finance Minister. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My name is John Hughes. Many thanks to Grandpa for my face mask and my outfit. You can always get some if you want it. But tonight, my guest in studio is the Honorable Kweku Ricketts Hagen. He is the Member of Parliament for the Cape Coast South constituency in the Central Region. He's also a former Deputy Finance Minister. Before the break, we're talking about the economic impact of COVID-19 
on our Ghanaian economy, looking at the global perspective and narrowing it down here. Earlier we heard uh, Dr. Theo Champon of the Imani Africa telling us what the figures look like, some predictions, and what impact it would have on us. Before the break, welcome back, by the way. Before the break, we're talking about uh, a lot of things, but you're saying that government is not doing certain things right. Quickly, yeah. top three. What is government not doing right? What could they do better? Well, government didn't start as well from the very onset. It didn't start well in the sense that somewhere at the beginning of March, end of February to beginning of March, mm. when we actually, this thing popped its head, you know, around, around the continent. Mm. And at that time, the president who was supposed to stay home and make decisions decided to travel. So he was going towards where the corona was coming from. If you remember, he went to Europe. The trip had, was essential. Had it not been, well... Had it not been the, the, I'm not questioning the trip, I'm questioning the timing. The trip was essential, we moved on. Well, if that's history. Sure, but these are, these are where the problems are coming okay. from. What I'm trying to say is that, because you remember when, when in one of his presentations, he had to go back retrospectively mm. to, to, to say that people should be tested from, from people the who came to the country. 1,000 and Yeah, people who came so. to the country from the 3rd mm. of, of, of March. Right. This decision should have been taken earlier. You shouldn't be at the end of it and now go. Those people have already no, no, come no, into our chicken is out of the box. Uh, absolutely. What do we do? The, the, so that's, that's, that's one step. Secondly, the lack of basically the PPEs and the preparation. Okay. You know. Third, the lockdown, which was essential, mm. getting lifted prematurely because of lack of resources to actually provide the, the, the food in terms of the, the alleviation. Mm. And then, obviously, not dealing with the, the impending recession. I mean, part the, of the, the... The ILO, for example, says that 2.7 billion jobs yeah, will be lost around about, the world. About 50%. Locally, yeah. uh, TUC is bemoaning the loss yeah. of jobs. Yeah. A fishing company in Tema, for example, has asked workers to stay at home yeah. without pay. Yeah. Paint companies, people who export fruit juices and others have had to lose their fruits. So there's that kind of pressure. Yeah. Those in the hospitality industry, sure. hospitals, sure. Um, uh, hotels and restaurants yeah. and beaches have been yeah. closed. How do we manage all these people? So, so basically, technically, we are not paying taxes. Technically, we are, we are in a recession or we are going into a recession. Mm. I mean, how soon? Well, if you, when we have a, a pandemic and you want to look at recession and you have a monthly data, mm. it will be month after month. So, uh, March, April, when you look at, at it and we have a downward trend, mm. you could actually predict a recession. But okay. technically, mm. recession should be two quarters, which means that, let's say, from January to March, and then March to June, mm -hmm. when, when, when you have recorded negative growth, then mm -hmm. you are technically in, in recession. But we are heading there, and it's going to be a severe one, as I said. But the government then is providing $1.2 to cushion businesses. That's not and enough. And $600 million, uh, TUC says it's a good start. Yes, but even the timing of it, the $600 million still hasn't gone out. This is supposed to be an emergency money, supposed to go to small businesses so they can keep paying their rent, mm. they can keep their businesses and and presumably keep their staff. They are laying people off because the 600 million, they are still working out the modalities. But you have approved it. Well, it has been approved. So spend. And it's not been. They haven't spent it. Who is holding the money? The government is holding the money. They are now working out who qualifies for the money or not. You are talking about small and medium businesses. <laughs> we know the businesses that are affected most. These are going to be businesses in the tourism area, mm. in hospitality, in management, in event, in, in production, and all that. That is not hard to figure out. Okay. Should Dr. Baumia has been speaking. He's been rebutting some of the things that Ex-President Mahama has been saying. <laughs> what are your thoughts? You, you, are, you work in the same sector with him. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually, Dr. Baumia actually hasn't got a clue of what is going on. I think he has. How actually, do you mean? He's, no, the, no, uh, he's the leader of the economic management well, team. Well, he's well, the well, vice president. That, that is questionable. Whether, he's whether, the leader of the 40-member committee. Uh, well, is he, part, is he part of that committee? Well, I mean, they put it together. Well, I, I, I didn't see his name there. Well, okay, but, his name is but, not there. But, but basically, mm. what I want to say is that Dr. Baumia has actually outlived his usefulness as an economic manager That's unfair. of the economy. That's unfair well, to him. If, if it's unfair, he has more or less become a cheerleader of his party. You know what cheerleaders do? No. They get off the bench. You know, when you go to, you know, mm. games, mm. they get off the bench, you know, during games, and they cheer their team. Pro sometimes they don't even know what the score is. And that is he what says the, he's speaking to data. Well, President Mahama should speak he, to he, data. He, you know, when you have a, you know, you when you have a garbage in, you get a garbage out data. Dr. Baumier's data that he comes up with. And that is why I have challenged him in the 230 questions that 
It's a garbage in data. Therefore, the output is also garbage. And I'm challenging him with numbers and with data that what you are saying, the numbers you are giving are not the accurate number. These are the numbers based on this data. Are you, now, are you, are come you, out there are you and, retaliating and, to the 271 questions he sent to the late Vice President uh, Emi Safa? I think it's 177. 170, yeah. I am not retaliating to that. These are a completely different set of questions. I mean, if you look at his questions that he sent to uh, uh, on, uh, His Excellency, Park with Shami, Shami, you saw raised in peace. Some of them were not even questions. They were just, you know, names of roads which have which have all been numbered as questions. Is, what says, I'm asking him is serious economic questions about the presentation that he made. You know, when he became fair. when he became irrelevant, mm. that is what he he's doing now. He goes back his old, old, old method. When he becomes irrelevant, like he did during the four, um, the FX crisis. The currency crisis mm. around November, and they did not include him in the FX committee. The moment things begin, be, uh, began to turn, you know, round in terms of the the currency started appreciating. Mm. He organized a town hall meeting and tried to, you know, try to make himself. Kajor Kroma says that let's not politicize the fight against I, 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 COVID I, I, because it could lead us down the wrong path. What do you I, say? I do agree with him. That is why Dr. Baumia should not come and equate. This pandemic, coronavirus pandemic, which is killing people to do so, these are not equal. Even if you had mentioned Ebola, that the two viruses, Ebola is what you can compare, you know, uh, coronavirus with, not with do so. I think that is a bit distasteful. Okay. And for him to go down that politics and try and draw President Mahama in, it's, it's really neither here nor there. Thank you. Quite because cool. he has lost his relevance. Cool. And every now and then, let me finish on this one. Every now and then, as a cheerleader, he has to come out and support his team. He did it in the November, um, the, the, the town hall meeting, when he became irrelevant. Now that he's missing in action in the coronavirus, the fight for, uh, uh, for COVID-19, Thank you. Kweku, Kweku, basically, I, become a Kweku, cheerleader again. I thank you very much and indeed. I wish you well in your forthcoming uh, elections. And many thanks indeed for watching tonight. Uh, many thanks to Kamala Kuchi, my producer, and to uh, Brenda uh, Dugan, and also to Grandpa. My name is Johnny Hughes. I'll see you next Thursday. Have a good night.